Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I got a package that was sent in to me by New England Crypto and Mrs. New England Crypto. Uh, they have a sick ASIC and we're gonna see if we can try to get it to work again. So let's go ahead and open up this package. Oh, cool. I got Mrs. New England Crypto stickers and New England Crypto stickers. And wow, it's a little baby Raven coin. That's pretty cool. And a Bitcoin. Thank you guys. So what we got here, oh God, packing peanuts. They're as bad as me. This has to be the power supply for it. Put that to the side. And this is an iPolo G1 Mini. And wow, it's heavier than I expected. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, here we go. So it's an iPolo G1 Mini. So here we go, iPolo G1 Mini. Uh, the problem with this is it won't turn on for him anymore. So first things first, let's do a sniff test. Nothing obviously smelled burnt or electronically burned in there. So let's see the power supply. That's a fairly big brick. Okay, so what's this output? This outputs 12 volts at 15 amps. Goes to regular barrel jack connector. Does have an LED, so first things first, let me get this plugged in and see if the power supply even lights up. Okay, so we do have a blue light. Okay, so let's take our meter, DC volts. Let's make sure we're getting 12 volts on this barrel jack. Should be center positive. Yep, 12 volts, perfectly. Okay, so power supply is probably okay. So, let's just have ethernet. Let's unwrap this. We get a flashlight. So our two fans on the one side here we have nothing going on in here. And actually, the second we plugged it in, the light went off. Looks like there's a dead short somewhere inside this unit. So I think we're going to have to open this unit up and see what's going on. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, just one cover coming off. That's just dust, no big deal. Oh, well now. Definitely see what's going on here. Let's see if I can uh, get in the view here. Let's look at the heat sink. It's not even touching the main ASIC and it's falling over and it's shorting everything out. So let me get this whole unit out of here. comes right out. Oh yes. Okay, so there's a little bit of dust. Something happened with the heat sink. It's literally not touching. Wow. Like it got unscrewed or something and that's what's shorting the whole thing out. Let's uh, see if we can disassemble it some more. What's interesting is we're actually already missing a single screw here from this corner of this cage frame. So let me take off the other three screws and see if we can break this down some more. Okay, so this is going to release the logic board. But I need to unplug a bunch of wires here first so I can get it out of the way. Okay, six pin power. And they're using these very interesting, almost like a Molex four pin for each one of these fans on each side. 
Okay, that's everything. Now we do have still a data cable over here on the side. And we gotta pull out, there we go. And we can get the data cable out of the way, the six pin power, and the four fans should work their way out. One, two, three, four. And that is basically just your logic board right here. It controls it. It's got a little tiny heat sink on it. It has for multiple hash boards, if that was the case, your ethernet, your power lights. That's about it, really. Let's put that to the side. Can we get these fans out of the way? No, not really. But if I get these wires to cooperate for five seconds, let me disconnect the rest of this six pin here. There we go, Let's get that out of the way. Now we can definitely take a closer look at what's happened here. Look at this. The heat sink has literally come off and it was actually touching the bottom of this board. Let me dust this off real quick. Okay, the capacitors look to be perfectly intact. <sighs> On the bottom where it was touching, honestly, I really can't tell where it's touching. I don't see any scorch marks. I don't see anything burned or shorted. Chances are probably what ended up happening is something was directly shorting on here from the six pin and the protection mechanism on the power supply itself was just saying, hey, there's a dead short. I'm not going to send any power until that short's fixed. So the power supply actually maybe has saved this unit. It may still be operational once we fix the heat sink. So let's pull off the rest of the heat sink here. Let's take it all the way off and see what we got underneath here. Okay, there's the heat sink. Nice copper. Whatever they were using is rock freaking hard. It's not really a pad per se. Well, maybe, maybe it is a pad. But that's what happened. Okay. Apparently this got, hold on. So apparently what happened is, if here's the two good sides. You can see the screws coming through the heat sinks. These two, for some reason, they're soldered into the PCB right here, but they came off for some reason. They actually desoldered, or they were bad solder joints for these two units. And that's what happened. It lifted up, shorted out with the top piece, and we had a problem. So what I'm gonna end up doing, if I can, is unscrew these things. I might have to get a pair of pliers here and see if I can re-solder them directly onto the PCB. Put this whole thing back together and see if we can get it up and working. I got these two re-soldered down. They should be cooled down enough now. Let me just double check, make sure they're nice and sturdy. Nope, did not grab correctly because I need to heat it up better. Let me put some more heat to it. <laughs> That did not work right. Okay, so I finally got those two re-soldered back on. I actually had to remove the board, put it in a carrier, use hot air on one side, and then my soldering iron on the other side to get enough heat to really solder it back down to the PCB. So I got that part reassembled. I also cleaned off the um, chip itself. It reads Miko G22 TBY F59.00 2153-151-ZM28. I'm not gonna bother looking it up. If you guys want to, you can. So, now that I've cleaned this off and cleaned that off, I think it was thermal paste, it was a really thick paste. I wanna see, with me just screwing this on bare, if I get a gap. If I don't really get a gap, I can just put regular thin thermal paste on here and call it a day. Otherwise, I might have to put a thermal pad, but considering this chip pulls 120 watts, it's not really a thermal pad material type of deal. Let's see what happens when I screw it back in. Okay, just snugged up. 
and there's barely a gap in there. I'm not sure if we can really see from the side there, but there's barely a gap in there. So I should be able to get away with just regular thermal paste. So let's pull this back off and paste it. Today we're using MX4. Now we're fully pasted and overkill is the name of the game here. Well, that's not good. Even one of my solder points now came loose. So I need to modify this a different way to keep that heat sink down. Yeah, see this solder joint already came loose again. Okay, so it's not pretty, but it's definitely the brute force method. I ended up taking two strands of insulated wire, wrapping it around, tightening it up like crazy, then soldering the joints so it wouldn't come apart. It definitely squeezed the solder paste or the thermal paste really good in there now. Oh my God, I got ooze everywhere. So it's a nice, good connection. Again, brute force method, not pretty, but it should work. Let's go ahead and reassemble this now and see what we got. Okay, all reassembled. Let's put it on that so we can power it up without it shorting out on anything. And here's our network. Let's plug that in. Actually, let's turn it around here because the power is right there as well. Here's our power. Now, let's see if it works or if we have um, magic smoke. Ooh, powered on. Fan started. We got lights. See if it goes through a self test. Okay, that's blinking. I have no clue how this thing actually starts up because I've never actually seen one of these running. The fans just ramped up. We got a green light. We don't have ethernet yet. It's probably still booting up. There, okay. Ethernet's activated. We're starting to get some activity. While this boots up, let me jump on my network so I can find the IP address and hopefully we can access it. Okay, so it's been running for about 10 minutes now. Let me bring you up to the dashboard screen. Uh, it's definitely got some heat coming out of it and it's running correctly. So if we look up here, we can see the graph. Uh, green line is the hash rate and the dotted blue line is the fan speed. Fan speed is around 4,000 RPM, and he is getting 1.28 gigasols a second, or gigasolution, sorry, whatever it is. I have no clue what Grin uses. Uh, fan speed, 40, 50. Temperature, only 52 to 54 C. This is outside of the case. I saw it put in the case. And reject rate is 0%. It is running perfectly fine. Okay, so now we got it back in the case. I can definitely feel the heat coming out of it. You can see the lights up and running. It's hashing away. But, wow, what a difference in temperature sitting in this case. It keeps fluctuating between like 64 to 68 C. Fans are still at 4,000 RPM. 1.23 giga solutions, whatever the heck it is. And you can see it hashing away. So, with that being said, if you want longevity on these things and to keep that this same thing from possibly happening, if you can safely take this out of the case and mount it somewhere so it doesn't short out or anything, it runs so much cooler. This case is way too restrictive and the solder job that they did on those lugs suck. So thanks for watching. Sorry, yeah, that was kind of a brute force way of fixing this, but at least it works and he can get hashing again. Take it easy, come say hi over to Misfit Mining Discord, and I will catch you on the next video.